Hi everybody, so I'm really excited to do this cup with you guys today. So this is my salon here in Nyack. We're a small salon, about 10 chairs. Um, we've been closed since March 15th because of the COVID-19, so we're really excited to bring you some education. I'm one of the Ojo Ambassador Art Team trainers alongside with Stephen, Stephen Adams, so we do a lot of training with the art team themselves. And Stephen and I do a ton of platform work with Nick around the country when we're doing shows, which obviously we're not right now, um, but over the many years we've done that. So Nick has been a really um, big mentor to me. Him and I still talk a lot during this time while we're you know, going through the same struggles as salon owners. So I'm excited today to just focus on some hair um, and uh, show you a fun pixie. So I have pre-sectioned a very, very simple pre-section. So what you want to do is come around this side and take a look. When you put your comb against the head, where the head then rounds away from you is what we call the round of the head. So I'm really just kind of on the round, if not slightly below it. I don't want to be above the round of the head when I start this kind of a haircut. Um, and then you can see that I kind of dropped that down toward the occipital and I've done the same thing on the other side, which we'll get to after. We're going to start one side first. What's really important to understand about graduation and about these kind of shapes when it comes to any kind of a pixie, pixie has kind of become like a blurred word. You know, it's like, uh, it could be a long version, it could be a short version. This is going to be more a bit of a classic with a modern twist. We'll do some kind of softness to the top and maybe a little bit more length up top. But either way, when you're graduating, you want to remember that you're building weight, right? So when we're layering, we're removing weight. When we're graduating, we're building weight. So what's really important to understand is that this hair, when it stands this way, or when we hold it this way, straight out from the head, we want to build a shape relative to the head. So if you look at my comb, my comb is going to kind of mirror what the degrees or the shape that could, you could create around the head. So if I wanted to create more of a rounded shape, I would have more of a shape like so. And then I'd work my way kind of diagonally in. With this kind of a shape, because I don't want it to be too bulky and we don't want it to be too round, this is going to be more of a flatter shape. So my comb is going to mirror similar to my finger position. Uh, when I'm on this side, uh, well, actually, before I get there, I'll show you a little bit of razor aerobics, what we call. So what you'll notice is I put a fresh blade in, we rotate the blade all the way around, and the, the handle really needs to sit snug inside, in between your middle and your index finger. That's really important. When we're not cutting hair, we wrap the index finger around the shaft of the blade or of the razor itself, which creates a lot of, um, I'd say, control of the razor itself, but also freedom of my other fingers. Then the comb comes in like so. So you're going to find that I'm going to be combing and sectioning with the wide side and then flipping the comb, cutting with the fine side so I get really great tension. I also encourage you guys to ask questions. So my beautiful wife who will kill me if I turn the camera around. That's right. Because uh, our due date for the baby is like less than three weeks away. So I'm not going to give you the pleasure of seeing Sabrina today. But she is behind the camera so that you guys can ask questions. She'll say the questions to me so that we can interact with each other. I'd love for you to ask questions. and. You know, especially anything related to this type of haircut or really anything haircutting related that, uh, that matters to you. If there's any students that end up watching this or students that are watching live now, welcome and um, let's get rolling. So I'm going to lower my mannequin stand just slightly. Okay, Alex so says we want to see the baby bump. <laughs> no, not today, Alex. <laughs> a little too you early for me. So what's really important too is you don't want to tilt the head too far away. If I do that, I'm going to build up more weight than I realize. So what's really important is that we have the head at just a slight tilt, which gives me room to kind of maneuver without her being too far over. So that's something, of course, listen, when we're dealing with mannequins, once you adjust the mannequin, it's going to stay there if you have it nice and locked in. A human is going to constantly kind of move. So you're going to find yourself needing to adjust the client over and over and over again. And I found that it's just a, a part of the process of me haircutting. So as opposed to getting really frustrated every time that I move my client's head or them apologizing as I'm sorry it wasn't in the right space, I just let them know it's okay. I'm going to just move you around throughout the entire process. So they get comfortable with it, I'm comfortable with it, and it kind of calls out the elephant in the room. So that's a good little piece of advice. Now, also with the mannequin, it's going to be a little bit different because they don't have much of a hairline. So um, the, the front won't fall quite exactly the same as it would on a person, but you'll still get the general idea. Now what's really important here too, actually, is if you notice this little corner here, if you're gonna do anything into the bang, this corner, if this goes too short here, you're gonna end up with like a little bit of a hole right here. So a lot of times what I like to do is just kind of take out this little corner as a little 
section of its own. And I'm just going to twist it and just get it out of my way. I will bring it back in once I do my detail work, but I'm going to do that more when I do the front. So I've taken my section and all I did was just take a little tiny triangle out just for safekeeping. It's kind of like a safeguard so that that area doesn't go too short. Okay, so fine side of the comb, just combing away. You're going to find that I'm going to be using the comb as well as moisture mainly as my clip. Okay, that's going to help me move relatively efficiently and stay a bit more fluid. So air before hair, that means that we're going to get the blade really rocking and rolling before it touches the hair. You can notice right away that it's starting to just kind of take that that shape and just start to create some softness. So what's left in my fingers is right here. So you'll see that instantly it creates this soft shape. Now let me just comb that back out for you so you can see. Remember what I was showing you before, this is mirroring the shape of the haircut, right? So it's a nice flatter graduation. It's not too round. We are building some weight, but we don't want to build up too much weight. That's really, really, really pretty crucial for this kind of a shape. Okay, next section is going to be parallel to the one that I just took. And I really don't want to over direct. I want to just come straight out from the head. Get that blade going again. Nice and soft. Now you'll notice also what I'm kind of doing ever so slightly is I'm kind of coming a little bit out as I reach the outline because I want to leave a little bit of this softness and I don't mind if that has these little bits. Now what I can also do is go back in and detail them but I don't want to get too caught up on the details right now. That used to happen to me in the beginning of my cutting career where you get so caught up on the details, by section two you're trying to detail, but you want to get your main shape in first and then detail once you're at that phase of the haircut. If I start detailing too quickly, it takes me out of the rhythm. This is a really great um, product to actually use when you're cutting. It's called Hydro Mist. I love this stuff. It's a, actually lighter weight than water. It has a really great scent um, and it won't soak the hair. So it's a really great product. You can retail to clients too, just for extra moisture. A lot of my clients purchase it on a regular basis. So I'm gonna be using that as opposed to a spray bottle of water. Now come take a look at this section. This is also what's really important. Look how, um, what I would call, this is, this is a vertical section, but it is on a very slight diagonal. So anytime that we say vertical, we're not saying like completely straight up and down because we're on a rounded head. So it has a very slight diagonal to it. I don't wanna be super diagonal quite yet, uh, because then I'll start to build up too much weight or, or what I'll really do is I'll over direct when I'm not planning on it. So let's get a little bit of an adjustment of the head ever so slightly. Now you can really see that I have a guide from here. The guide is right there. Hopefully you can see that. I know that her hair is dark, but right there is the guide. We have a question. Sure. Zebra asks, why is a blade better than straight scissors? I have thin hair and I like a straight cut. Well, we're always really careful to not say what's better or what's worse. So we don't love the word better or worse. Um, I, I always say the question like, if I had a, a screwdriver that was a flathead, or if I had a Phillips head screwdriver next to each other, which one is better, right? They're not necessarily better, they're both screwdrivers. Um, it's just gonna fit a certain screw better. So if you're looking for an incredibly clean, blunt haircut, then of course scissors probably make the most sense. You can achieve really clean blunt lines with a razor as well because of the manipulation of my fingers. So this is what we call the stroke. So if I did this whole entire haircut with a very short stroke the whole time, it would give a very different feel. It would give a lot more structured feel to this. I'm looking for structure in my shape, but softness and fluidity with the outline and the overall feel of the cut. So I hope that answers the question. Okay, now, first section that I'm coming down into the nape. You can also see that this was like a graduated bob kind of a haircut. So I wanted to use this mannequin because a lot of times when your client's ready to go into something short, she's starting from something like a bob or maybe somewhere around there. So this is a great way for you to also see the difference in how we're going to change this shape. Okay, so just combing this away. Okay, straight out from the head. Remember, I'm not over directing. I'm just coming straight out from the head, nice and soft. Razor, and now I'm working my way down toward the back of the head. So what's really important is that I start to work in this way, not out that way, okay? Because I'm gonna make sure that I'm tapering this shape in. Again, I'm gonna leave the outline 
a little bit longer because that's going to add a little bit of that softness. And again, because it's a mannequin, you have to kind of use a little bit of your imagination with what this would be doing if it was a human's hairline. So this would be laying a little bit flatter and softer. And you can see around here, I have this really nice fluidity and softness, but at the same time, when I pick up my weight, my weight line here, come take a look here, we have a nice clean weight line. So you can see that it's going to start to move around the head. Okay, next section. So again, now, following those section, that section pattern that I've been doing, I've just been taking parallel sections. Now, because the head is starting around, to round away from me, I'm going to start kind of tilting my section a little bit more. So I'm a little bit more diagonal right here on this section than I was two sections ago. So this is what I call a technique haircut. So you really can adjust this haircut depending on what your desired result is. So if you wanted this to be a little bit longer, if you wanted it to be a little bit tighter, if you wanted to build more weight, you would just adjust certain things. So maybe a little bit more in the direction, maybe a slightly different sectioning pattern, but this gives you a really great foundation for this kind of a shape. I could be doing this exact haircut with scissors, same sectioning pattern. It would just give me a different overall feel altogether. Again, just kind of whittling this down. Other question? Yep. Elizabeth asks, if a person is going from long hair to this, would you get rid of some length first before cutting a pixie? Yeah, if they had a lot of long hair, definitely. Um, so, like, it's hard to say. Let's just say she had hair down to the middle of her back, right? Definitely, I'd cut it right to the chin. Like, just whack it off before she gets shampooed. Um, in this case scenario, she has a bob, so I don't really need to do that. But yeah, if she had extra length, it makes it a lot easier to, like, work with a little bit less hair. Sometimes you don't want to take away the drama of it, but if it's gonna make you slower, um, and a lot of times too, what happens is the, the hardest part of the haircut is done at that point for the client. They've now, okay, that length is gone. It's not like this process that's gonna happen the whole entire appointment. So I find that mentally that can also be good too. So come around this side, um, so you can really start to see the shape that we're building. Can you see kind of how this weight line just starts to sit and move all the way through and we're starting to get slightly longer as we go not much though really not much at all there was a tiny bit of over direction on that last section but again um, not too much all right so next section here coming right through so now I'm gonna just get that hair away from me see how nice and clean I can stay even though I don't use a clip in this particular part of the haircut I could I could put a clip here if I needed to she just has enough length that it's staying away from me so I don't necessarily need to do that as long as I can see the clear line of my, um, my section, the whole entire scalp, right? And it should look like a nice clean line. I can get my comb directly into the base of that section. I see a lot of people do this and then they'll start combing like an inch or two away. You wanna always make sure that you're combing right to the base of the section. Now, look where I'm holding this hair. If I started to hold this hair more here, which won't feel like much of a difference, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna start getting longer because I'm actually over directing toward this way. Right, so I want to be really careful that I'm not dragging this hair forward accidentally or without kind of realizing it. Okay, so I'm gonna, and also what I just did was instead of cutting from where I was standing, I need to take a little bit of a shuffle over. So where I'm standing relative to the head really, really, really matters. Okay, straight out. Look at how I'm leaning over. I'm gonna get my blade rolling. Oh my goodness, I miss hearing that sound of hair cutting. All right, coming right through. So for those that don't know me, I started as a, uh, a salon owner just about nine years ago. It'll be nine years this summer. And um, I had been working with the Rojo the year before I opened my salon with the Rojo product. So that was 10 years ago. I've been working with the Rojo product. And I started coming around to Happy Mondays classes, which was a free educational class every Monday or first Monday of every month. Um, and I really kind of became enamored with the razor. I had not cut with the razor my whole career. It was a 10 year career without touching a razor. And um, I really started to immerse myself in all things the Rojo. Um, I studied the, at that time, the DVDs. We uh, installed some TVs in my salon at that time, which, remember those TVs that had a built-in DVD player? We used to play those, those TVs with the DVDs from a Rojo all the time, all day, every day on silent. Um, so clients started to kind of like see what the craft was like, and we started to transition the brand into a crafted brand. Um, and to be able to explain that, uh, relate that to clients, I thought was really important. And now we have this TV here that we usually use, it's like a smart TV with like a USB, that has a lot of our own educational stuff or, or 
Orojo stuff as well. So uh, it's been an evolution that way over the years. Uh, so about six years ago, I think it was, I took a four week uh, intensive boot camp. It's called a Rojo boot camp. And uh, that was a game changer for me. I really immersed myself in, in the education. Uh, it was everything from classic scissor cutting to razor cutting to men's cutting to styling. Um, and that kind of began my, my career with the Rojo in the sense of after that, Nick and I really connected and I started to do some platform work and uh, the rest was history from there. So I'm tilting the head away a little bit, just slightly now. And I'm going to keep following this really nice sectioning pattern. If you notice, I'm staying really organized, like I said before, really clean. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep working until we cross over this little V right here. Because what that's going to do is that's going to cross over center back. When I do the same thing on this side, it kind of, the, the section starts to overlap. And they give me, it's almost like a cross check as I go. I'm going to cut this area here now. Now, what you don't want to do again is comb down this way. If I wanted this weight line to start getting much longer as I work around, then I would do that. But I'm, again, I'm going a bit more with that classic lean shape. So I don't want to build up too much weight through here. I do want to keep this a bit rounded, though, because I don't want it to get too square and become masculine. So one of the first things that a client that is getting this kind of haircut says is, I don't want to look like a man, or I don't want to look like a boy. Um, and there are many, many ways that you can make this haircut look very feminine. That's when I think showing them a visual of your classic um, pixies like an Audrey Hepburn or a Holly Berry or you know a Michelle Williams has had those kind of variations which are incredibly feminine looking. So I always kind of let the client know, don't worry, this, sometimes this kind of haircut can look a lot more feminine than your traditional female haircut that you would think. Okay, so let's go right back in. Combing straight out. There's my guy. Just working my way down. Okay, staying really consistent, taking a little bit of a shuffle with my feet over toward the section. Nick and Nula are in the house right now. Nick and Nula in the house. They say hey. Looking great, Dar. Thank you. So now let's take a look here. I want to show you what's happening here. Okay, so if you can see, see instantly this hair can kind of push away. You can even see visually if you're going to have inconsistencies in your graduation. I think clients are walking by saying hello right now. <laughs> um, anytime that we've been in the salon, people are literally peering inside like, oh my God, are they open? Are they cutting hair? It's pretty funny. Um, but that's not that for you. I think a lot of clients are desperate to get their hair done, of course. Okay, so now take a look at this. See, see the difference in the shape. I want you to see this from here, uh, from the profile for a second. So if I drop this down, you can see what this former shape was. Obviously, it's a lot longer, but you can see the difference here. This shape, look how lean my shape is, right? So it's, it's flat to the head, but it still has a bit of a rounded feel here, which again, keeps that feminine shape. And again, if I just pick up my weight line, you'll be able to see that softness in that weight line. See how it just has a staggered or a jagged kind of effect. That's the beauty of the, <coughs> excuse me, of the razor. Okay, next section. Okay, so my sections are getting slightly more diagonal, but I don't want to have it all of a sudden start here and end back here, right? Because then it would be um, too diagonal. So you want to be careful about that. Think of almost like a basketball, right? The, the, the diagonal lines that run around it, similar to that, okay? Again, sh shuffling my feet as I work my way to the bottom half of the section is really important so that I can make, maintain the correct body position. This way I'm not over-directing unintentionally. That's one of the biggest mistakes that I see made from a young stylist or even from a, a seasoned veteran where you're over-directing without realizing you're over-directing. So 10 sections later, you're like, wait a minute, where did that extra weight come from? Um, and that more than likely means you weren't aware of where you were standing or where you were pulling the hair. Sabrina's smiling right now, so does that mean you're getting a funny comment? No, I, I'm reading some of the questions, well, two questions. Okay, um, we have a question from Enrique. He's asking, what kind of razor are you using? And he said, great technique. And it's Maritza just saying, hey. Hey, Maritza. Uh, Ricardo? Enrique. Enrique, I'm sorry. Enrique. Enrique. Uh, this is the Rojo razor. So this is the Rojo wooden handle. We have these available on rojopro.com. Um, all things Arojo tools are on Arojo, A-R-R-O-J-O, pro, P-R-O, dot com. Um, and same thing with the clips, same thing with this comb. This is the white comb. I love to use 
a white razor comb when I'm working with dark hair, and the classic red-handled blade, uh, red-handled um, uh, razor is your classic Erosion one. This was handcrafted wood where it's a skinnier handle, so it's a little bit more ergonomic, a little bit more comfortable. I still love the classic red, um, but this is definitely my favorite. Okay, working my way out here. Again. Hey Liz, hey David. Hey guys. So Liz, is that Liz Daniels? Yep. So Liz is an amazing hair cutter and hairdresser in the Chicago area. David Gatt, Square Root Salon, Beauty to the People. In Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, no, this is it. David Bray. I'm sorry. Oh, David Bray. David Bray is in, you're in North Carolina. Yeah. David Bray. Another ambassador salon. Working my way all the way down. So you can see there's not a whole lot to cut down here at the bottom because, again, I want that softness through here. But, of course, again, because it's stitched in, it's not quite the same as, a, as an outline. But you get the feel. And I don't want this to all of a sudden look bulky, so I'm just leaving that and making sure that I'm working toward that um, so that I still have that softness of that shape. Okay, so I'm working my way back through now so that I can really see the profile shape coming together. And again, I want to tilt her head slightly down, not too much. Now, there will be a slight overdirection here because, again, I want to make sure that this weight line follows my sectioning pattern. So my weight line is dropping down toward occipital ever so slightly. So you'll see here that I do have a slight overdirection, and look what I mean. If I wasn't overdirecting, come bring the camera right over here so you can see where the hair grows from. I want you guys to get this idea because I train my team. Start looking at the hair from the root. So my eye is zeroing in here not on my fingers, meaning if I cut the hair, oops, if I cut the hair this way, look at where the hair would be cut relative to where it grows, that's over direction. If I didn't want over direction, I would be cutting it right from here, but I am gonna give it that slight over direction because what that's gonna do is move my weight line down where I wanna see it. And that allows for a little bit of that rounded shape through the back, which again cr creates that soft fluid motion. Look how many times I comb my section before I go in. Uh, if you've ever watched Nick cut hair, um, watching Nick cut, like for me, one of the things was I didn't, I couldn't tell what I was more mesmerized, the way he cut the hair or the way he combed the hair. And I remember being like, damn, I gotta be able to comb hair like that because that was a missing link for me. It was something that I had never been taught. So if you want to become a really great hair cutter, you actually have to become a really great comber. Um, and the good news about that is Combing hair takes no talent. I was so relieved when I heard that because I'm not the most talented hair cutter. Um, so if I could just rely on discipline, then I'd be good. So I just had to discipline myself to keep combing the right way. Comb, 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 over and over and over again. Um, and I just kept watching the videos over and over and over again so that I could get comfortable with that kind of technique. Carmel says, very good, Derek. Look at that consistency. And we have a question. Oh, thank Deborah you. asks, I just moved to Palm Coast, Florida. Do you know any hairdressers here that are as much of a perfectionist as you? <laughs> <laughs> um, Palm Coast, can you give me an idea relative to That's like that northern. To? What's that near? Is that near Northeast Palm? Florida. Is that near Palm Beach? No, that's way north. I so think. are you like near Sarasota or are you like on No, the... Sarasota is west. Okay, I, I, I obviously am not very familiar <laughs> with Florida geography. Uh, so just give us an idea of what I'm trying to are. think of what's near there. Because um, I know we definitely do have some salon, um, some ambassador salons in the Florida area for sure. Uh, but just give us an idea of where you're close to. And then maybe one of the, um, one of our Orojo peoples on there, if any ambassador is on, you can kind of, if you're from Florida. I know that we have, in Palm Beach, we have Tracy Vasquez. In Wellington, we have Vision Salon. Um, those are the two that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm not sure uh, around where else. She says it's near St. Augustine in Jacksonville. Oh, okay, so you're all up there. I would have to find out that for you. DM me. You can send me a message, and we'll share this onto my page as well, Derek Anthony. Or you can send a message to the Erodo page, and we'll try to get back to you and make sure that we can uh, find a really great haircut for you. I know it's really hard as a consumer right now, as a customer, to probably watch a man can get their haircut because you just want your haircut so bad. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's been hard for us as well not to be able to service our clients. But I want to give you an idea again of the leanness of shape I was talking about. And like what Carmel just mentioned, the consistency of shape. So there's two, I would say there's three things that are going to make you or break your consistency, right? Make or break your consistency. One is the consistency of your stroke. 
So if I have an open stroke on most of my sections and all of a sudden I start closing on a few sections, there's not gonna be consistency in the feel of the haircut. If I don't have consistency in my, in my sectioning, the way that I was talking about, and making sure where I'm over directing or not, that's number two. Number three is the way that I comb. So it's your razor stroke, it's your, the way that you section, and it's the way that you comb. If you practice those three things, and you practice them over and over and over again, I promise you, you'll be like a different hair cutter in a week, uh, just by simply doing that. So, you know, what, what is one of the, the best parts about right now is that we have a really great opportunity to practice and to get better, um, and to reset the table once we get back to work. So maybe recommit to a higher quality of haircutting. Um, me and Nick always say, like, the haircut is, is going to make a comeback. You know, color has reigned supreme for quite some time, but I think, I think uh, the haircut's making a major comeback. Okay, so now you can see I've just crossed over center back. And again, my weight line slightly moved down toward here. So if I pick it back up, you can see, look at the way that my weight line was moving. It actually rounded down toward me. You can see it right here. It stops right here. I'm gonna do one, actually I'll probably do two more. Cause I like to cross over center back, like by one or two sections, depending on the size of the head and the size of the sections again, or how much hair the client typically has. So I'll probably do two more. So this is one. Then I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna come to the front, and I'm gonna work my way back that way to kind of meet exactly where I started from the other side. Okay, so bring it back. Nice and fluid. Again, look at my stroke, very consistent. So we put a challenge out to our apprentices. We're still doing training every Tuesday right now, virtually. And kudos to the girls that show up every single week. It's an unpaid thing, it's just volunteer. Um, and they're all doing a great job. So what we've been doing is a practice where they send me a video for five minutes every night and they hold their, their scissor. The Rojo scissor right here, by the way. I'll use this toward the end, but this is what they're doing. They're practicing this every single night. They send me a five minute video. And I told them, whoever can send me a five minute video seven days, uh, seven days in a row, I'm gonna Venmo you 50 bucks. And- um, I think you just got your first video from Danielle. Yeah, Danielle sent the video last night, Zariah's been sending it, Jackie's been sending it, did, did, uh, oh, yeah. Danielle sent today already? Yeah. Awesome. So it's just a way to kind of challenge them to be consistent and to practice and to get better at something during this downtime. Okay, one more section, then we go to the other side. Comb that away. So now again, I don't want to, because now I'm on the opposite side of the head, I've crossed over, I don't want to do this. I don't want to pull this hair all the way back here. It's going to create weight right here. So I need to move my body. That's why I don't want to keep going after this section because it could kind of push me toward doing that. I'm actually going to make this section slightly slimmer. And see what happens is, like uh, that question that we got before about the meticulousness of the way that we cut hair, uh, your clients will notice this, guys. They will know that, oh man, I, I have a hairdresser or I have a hair cutter that really cares about their work. And that's gonna make them more confident to come to you and it's gonna allow you to bring your price point up to where it deserves to be. I think, you know, a large part of our business is underpriced um, and undertrained. So I don't think that your price should, should raise before your training raises. So when you can elevate your training and you get better, then of course, why not elevate your price? So when I first started with the Rojo, my cut was I think 55, um, and my cut has literally doubled over those years. So now it's 110. Okay, let's come around this side. So now we're gonna switch sides. Okay, you can see what's happening here. Let's actually put a clip on this side as well, just so it's a bit out of my way. And we're gonna do the same thing that I did before meaning just taking out that little corner right here, right about there. And again, they don't have to be completely identical as far as where the corner is, but relatively very similar. And of course, in this shape too, I need both sides to be basically identical, right? I'm not looking for like, you know, a little bit longer through one side. That wouldn't really work in this shape. If I was gonna do any kind of asymmetry or if you wanted any kind of, you know, disconnection, that can happen in this section through here on the top which I'm gonna show you what some of your options would be and kind of what I'm gonna to decide to do with this cut. Okay, so I'm just double checking from the back to make sure again, just to verify that I'm even. I don't want one side to be way higher over the head and the other side way lower. So 
So I feel good. I think I'm going to just sling this down ever so slightly right here. So again, this is a part of just like observing where you're at and what you're doing before you go into cut. And before I actually do this, I'm going to close this and put it down. So don't try to hold the razor while you're going to maneuver a bunch of other things. That's when you can get cut. It's not usually when you're even cutting hair, to be honest. Okay, so I just wanted to slim that down for safekeeping, make sure it was perfect. Same thing here. And then we'll be ready to go. So again, I think this part of being meticulous really, really, really matters. All right, let's do it. Okay, so now I'm gonna stand here. I'm gonna lower the mannequin just ever so slightly, maybe an inch, not too much, maybe an inch and a half. Because what happens is my fingers now need to point this way. So naturally my body, it needs to be lower. If I was up here, I'm not gonna be able to get that body position that I want as opposed to if I'm cutting right here. Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna push with my thumb to get a nice clean section. Comb this away just like I did on the other side. It's all about consistency. If you know me, you know that I'm a fan of consistency. Okay, so here we go. First section, combing out. Hair before hair, really getting that blade rolling. And again, slightly pulling out toward this hairline area or the outline area because I want that softness in the shape. And again, I can always detail that after. Okay, so now I'm gonna pause for a second. This is a touch point. Like Nick would say, a, a touch point. I can't do the accent. He, he hates me when I do the accent. Okay, <laughs> let, me, um, let me go a little shorter here. So remember, I always call this wiggle room, right? Wiggle room to me means allowing, like you don't need to hit the nail on the head the very first section that is exactly the same length as the other side. Sometimes that'll happen, but the reality is I went slightly longer on my first section here in anticipation that I'll probably take a little bit more off. I don't have to keep moving, right? So don't just cut it and then not do a check-in with your other side. Just gonna take a little bit more off. Hopefully Sabrina doesn't go into labor while we're doing this live. I hope not. Okay, so now I'm just double checking. There we go, so see I'm pinching and I'm pulling. Pinching and pulling forward. That feels really good. Okay, great. Next section. Now let's tilt the head back. Oh, by the way, this is, you'll see Rosie's name on here. So Rosie, if you get to watch this, I brought your mannequin. I owe you one. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie's one of our great hairdressers. She's an amazing colorist, an amazing hairdresser all the way around. She also attended a Rojo boot camp. And also Amanda. <clears throat> I have a stylist named Amanda. She's one of our signature stylists. She's actually going to be doing a, a Facebook Live. Amanda, if you're watching, put the date and time that you're going to be live. And I know she's going to be doing a really fun long layer cut with the razor. She's actually going to paint the mannequin beforehand so that you can see how she would open up a shape in order to complement the color, which I thought was a really great idea of hers. Um, I, I don't want to say the wrong date. I think it's the 22nd at 11 a.m., I think. But uh, let's have Amanda confirm that if she signs on. Okay, next section. Again, staying really parallel to each section, staying really consistent. Moving my body ever so slightly. I'm gonna turn that, there we go. Now here we go, air before hair. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. This is my third section now, so it's a quick touch point again. I'm gonna pause. The best way to do this, now I would be using a mirror on a client as well which I'm not doing for the benefit of you guys for now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take a piece of this top. This is my weight line from the other side. This is my weight line from this side. They should feel relatively even. They should feel about the same, which they do. They feel good. So I can keep going now. So again, I don't wanna overly obsess and like check every single section, but every third or fourth section, when I first start, first section definitely check. Three sections later or four, I like to check again. And then I like to go all the way to this corner here, to where the head's about to round away from me, and then I'll probably do another check-in. But I'm not gonna check, you know, every other section. Because then, then again, that'll throw you off of your rhythm of the cut. I find hair cutting to definitely be a rhythm, almost like a dance. Um, and I like to keep the rhythm of the cut, because it keeps me in that, that, like, that zone. Anne-Marie says, such an amazing lineup of amazing talent. 
This week was full of education. Thank you to all amazing Erojo ambassadors. Oh, thank you. Thankful. Yeah, you know, me and Steven got together. We talked about this for a while. And uh, we did a FaceTime with Nick about it. He loved the idea. Uh, Steven really spearheaded it. I have to say that Steven is, Steven's the glue, you know. Um, and he's been one of my mentors. Been doing hair a lot longer than me. So I'm still the rookie in the game. And I, I, I love being in that space because I get to learn from some of the greats. And, you know, spending that much time with, St uh, you know, Steven Adams or Alex that was on yesterday or even Carmel. You know, I learned a lot from Carmel. Carmel saw me when I didn't even know how to hold the razor, you know? So you can come a long way in your, in your career if you choose to like just commit to some of, the, um, some of the work that it takes. It's really all it is. Nice and soft. Okay, I wanna show you that. So see how soft that is? Also, look how consistent that looks, right? You can see it's consistent from start to finish of the section. Probably making some real one haircut. I do. Much needed. Okay, just filing that off. Okay, you can see again, look at how that's starting to take shape. You should see the leanness in the shape from side to side. They should be very similar. They feel it. They look it. It's also the eye test. You want to use the eye test too. It's not just pinching and pulling, it's the visual. That is the beauty of the razor. It does give you, like, it allows you to break free of some of the structure that scissors kind of demand, I would say. But you have to have that structure first to then be able to break free of it. So I think that's what I was missing. I didn't have a solid, solid, solid scissor foundation enough to become a great razor cutter. So when I went to Rojo, I started working on my scissor work first. Got really much better at that and then grew into a, a razor cutter because of that. Okay, next section. Coming out. Okay, and I'm gonna bring that section all the way down. Nice and consistent again. Get my fingers in. Just file that off. Just gonna pinch that here. Give it some softness. Okay, next section. Look, I push down with the thumb. Right? There's my section right there. And I comb with the fine side. Again, not, I've not used one clip through either side, right? So, but I can stay consistent and I can stay clean the whole time. Combing out. Again, I don't want to pull forward. Don't want to pull that way. I want to pull out from the head. There's my guide. Recombing. Just going to shuffle my feet ever so slightly. All the way down. There we go. Okay, now we're pushing around. I always like to comb again. You want to comb and push. So what happens is, if I push it forward and I push it backward, I will see if there's an inconsistency in my shape um, right away. So don't just cut and go on. Don't just cut and go on. Cut, comb, look. Cut, comb, look. That's kind of what I always practice in my head. Okay, I'm gonna cut one more section and then we're gonna double check. Actually, I might as well just check now. I'm just checking for my consistency here. That feels good. Okay, great. Okay, there's an ever so slight over direction now. Remember from the other side, ever so slight, not too much. Because I wanna make sure that I'm working my way down following the shape of my section. Good. So for me, it's like, I, I realized as a hair cutter, well, as a hair salon owner, that I wanted to like perfect my craft so that I could then inspire my team to perfect theirs. You know, so that we could become a really high quality service provider, you know, and a high quality hair salon in our area, which I think we accomplished over this, this last decade. Derek, what can people, watching due to become a part of Erosion Network? 
uh, as a salon owner or as a hairdresser? I guess both. Okay, so as a salon owner, all you need to do is connect. You know, it really does start with the product. That was good. So see, that's that consistent that I'm looking for. See that? You can kind of see if I drew a line or a circle to connect, that the, the shape is good and the length is good. Okay, so back to the question. So how do you connect to the Eurodo Network? The best way to do it is to send, you can send me an email, Derek, D-E-R-E-K, at theanthony.com, um, and I can put you in touch with the right people. If you're looking for education, send an email to Loretta, L-O-R-E-T-T-A, at erodonyc.com. If you're looking for to carry the product and carry the line, uh, and you want to become an ambassador salon, where, like my salon, we carry the line, we immerse ourselves in the education, send an email to Valeria, V-A-L-E-R-I-A, at erodonyc.com, and she can help put you in touch. Well, she's the relationship manager that can really help start that relationship. Um, and if you're a hairdresser and you're looking to get educated, um, you know, take part in the online subscription is, a, is, a, is a, uh, an option for you. Um, some of this virtual education like you're doing now. Um, and then um, once we're kind of back up and running and we're able to be around each other again, come to some of the Erojo events. And uh, that's a great way to connect, for sure. We have salons all over the country. I mean, we have, I have friends that are everywhere from Iowa to Chicago to Florida, to Wisconsin, to Minnesota, you know, all the way out in Washington State, in Seattle, Philly, Buffalo, I mean, we're all over. So uh, you don't have to look far, but um, we love to connect with really great salon owners. We love to connect with great, you know, just salon people and hairdressers that are looking to connect to a group of people that are really focused on education and culture. We're also really business mindset, so if that's even mindset, it's okay, we have a really strong business mindset. Um, so for me, I wanted to become a great salon owner and businessman just as much as I wanted to become a great razor cutter. Both of them matter to me just as much. Okay, keep going now. See, now we're really on the home stretch of the entire, you know, size of the haircut because I just have this little patch of hair left. And now you can clearly see that with this section right here, I'm crossing over into what I previously cut from the other side, right? So it gives me a guide from the bottom and now a guide from the top. So believe it or not, last week it snowed in New York and today it's 85 degrees. Go figure. Okay, just about done. Let's keep going. So again, crossing over into what I've already cut. You can clearly see that, that um, shape. You can clearly see my section. There's the guide. What's the name of the sal our salon and what city? Uh, the name of my salon is D. Anthony Studio. We're in Nyack, N-Y-A-C-K, New York. So I'm 30 minutes north of Midtown Manhattan, and um, you can check us out on danthony.com, D-A-N-T-H-O-N-Y.com. So we're in Nyack, New York. We're just outside of Manhattan. So we're, our county is called Rockland County. We're very close to Westchester County, which is, you know, if you know New York, it's where like the whole Corona virus and the COVID thing kind of was the catalyst there. Okay, so here's, look at that. So you can clearly see, I've crossed over into what I have. I have a clean line moving down. I just have to file this little hair up here. So I'm gonna come from the bottom here. Just take it right off. So now, if you come back to this side, let's take a, the, the profile, or well not the profile, but see the, the shape from the back. I want you to kind of see what's happening here. This is the weight line that we met here. It came down, it mirrors this exact sectioning pattern. Same thing here. So it works its way this way. And if you look at it from the back, you get a nice flat kind of shape here with a bit of a rounded feel here. Same thing from the profile. So you can start to see there's a little bit of a rounded feel there. So different than if I was cutting a man's hair, I'd be, it'd be much more square. I wouldn't necessarily do the exact same thing, right? So this is a way that you can keep your, your, um, your pixie feel very feminine. So I'm gonna put this down for a moment and let's take both clips out. Let's see what we have left and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. You have a lot of options with this kind of a haircut, which is what I love. 
So we're going to comb it all forward first. Just see what's left here. Okay, so I'm going to turn her this way so you guys can see. So now, coming from where this uh, back of this little point is, I'm going to push that forward and I'm going to come over the round of the head now. I'm just going to comb that down to the side. And I'm going to start there, okay? You know, I'm treating this as if I was live in the salon cutting. You know, so I'm not doing intricate, like, pre-sectioning before I, when I'm cutting a client. You know, we're moving as we go. We're sectioning as we go. So that's what I'm doing for you here. I'm going to take that same corner out again that I did before. So all I did basically was now take a section. My first section was just below the round of the head. Now I'm above the round of the head, right? So this is that transition point between the sides and what will eventually connect to the top. Okay, I have two options. Let's see which one I want to go with. Because again, this is, I'm not going like super classic pixie, but it, I wanted to have a bit of that classic feel. So yes, so the option is we're going to cut just like we did before, but my section is going to change ever so slightly. I'm going to be just a little bit more diagonal, which is going to allow me to build a little bit more length. Let's just spritz this. So a little bit more, the more vertical, the tighter and shorter you can get. The more diagonal or the more horizontal, the more length you'll start to keep. So I'm not going to go one or the other. I'm not completely vertical, definitely not completely horizontal. I'm just going to be on a little bit more diagonal like so. Check it out. Just like that. See? So a little bit more diagonal. This is going to come straight out. There's my guy. Cut right on the guy. Next section. Same thing here. So not a whole lot of hair to cut here. I can move through this relatively quickly. But I don't want, excuse me, I don't want this area to go too short because then it makes the top hard to connect into. You want some length. And you can also see how open I'm being with my razor now. How open that is. Nice open feel. So again, I'm just connecting and blending this in. So nothing's really changing here. We're just connecting. Same thing here. A little bit more over direction now. So now let's look at the nice open blade. There's my guide. You can see the guide from underneath, right here, and also behind the section as well. Nice open blade. Pick that up one more time, make sure that we got it all. Feels a little long there. There we go. And again, always combing. Wide side of the comb. Flip to the fine side. Definitely over directing this way now because again, maintaining that length. Same thing here. Okay, this should be my last section right here. This is my last piece here. I'm going to pull it down toward me. Connect it right into that area to the back. So now you can see again, just that nice lean shape. But we have built up some weight here, right? Because again, this will then help us connect into the top. Does that make sense to you guys? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense for you. Or give me a question if you have one. Okay, same thing on the other side. Okay, we're gonna take a look here. See where we're at here. Okay, let's go on this side now. So we're gonna come over the top of the head. Now I'm gonna move my mannequin over a little bit. I do have a mirror here, so I just wanna take a look. Doing this blind is always hard when you don't have like a mirror that you're constantly referencing. So I have a little bit of a mirror here. I don't want to distract you guys from it. I'm just going to kind of take a look just to make sure that I feel like I'm on track there. Okay. Now let's just push this here back over out of the way. So you could totally disconnect the whole top if you wanted here, guys. You could go 
you know, a bit more avant-garde with it, go a little bit more funky with it. There's a lot of options that we can do through the top that I'll show you in a moment. We're still really working our way up the side. And again, this is that transition between the top and the side. So I always like to do this. If you put your hands okay. on top of the head and on the side of the head, what do you have left? You have that transition area that I'm referencing now. Okay, so you have a question. Can you explain how you keep cutting, how you keep your guide consistent when you're cutting above your fingers? How do I keep my guide consistent when I'm cutting above my fingers? Uh, it's honestly not a whole lot different than how I would keep it consistent if I'm cutting below the fingers. You know, it's the combing, it's the consistency of the stroke. You know, so for a razor, uh, it's the consistency of my actual fingers. For a scissor, it's going to be the consistency of my thumb, right? And how, how cleanly I cut that. So if you're cutting like this and you're using your whole hand, that's going to sometimes be harder. I find um, with most students, the biggest issue with finding their guide consistent is the tension and combing. It has nothing to do with actually how they're actually cutting. They can be cutting on their guide, but then they're not maybe combing consistently. So if they go back and comb and then they see there's more hair to cut, they're like, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. um, so it's really more about your tension and your combing than anything else. Okay. So let's talk about that real quick. So also, let's, I, I took out that little corner. Let me just get a little bit more out. It's not too high. There we go. And again, I'm saving that for when I work on the bay area. So now she's going to tilt toward me. Thumb goes in. Let me just flip my comb. Thumb goes in. See a little bit more diagonal than before. There's my guide. I'm going to pull this a little bit forward. See, nice and soft, nice and fluid there. Don't get too caught up on your details. Like if I decided that this was too long, I could always go back, but I think that that feels good for now. You know, just give yourself like the room to maneuver. That's that wiggle room I was talking about. If you go too short too soon, it's like you're stuck, you know, and it's like, you're, that's it. But if you go a little long and then you kind of take a look at it and you comb it, and then you decide that you want to go a little shorter, well, then you're more in control. I was watching Carmel yesterday and she was like, your clients know it too. Like you don't want to be winging it. You know, you want to have a bit of a, of a plan going in. Um, and for me, it's like, I have a plan going in, but I allow also my creative side to decide um, if that plan needs to alter or adjust throughout the haircut. Sometimes it does. Sometimes you change your mind a little bit. Um, sometimes um, you do a certain thing to the hair and you're like, hmm, I don't love that. Maybe I should go a little longer than that moving forward. Things like that. So I don't think you have to be locked into what you're going to do, but you should have a very specific idea, strong idea of what you're going to do. And maybe in the beginning, when you're first learning, just stick to that. Okay, this is going to have a very, like, Charlize Theron, you know, kind of a vibe. Like, I'm going with more of that classic shorter pixie. This would be for someone that's really willing to, like, go for it, which is always fun in the salon. What happens is, you know what happens when you're doing this haircut in the salon? Everybody in the salon is watching you. Every long-haired woman is like living vicariously through that client. And she's like, wow, you're so brave with it. Oh my God, that's so pretty. I wish I could do that. How many times have you heard someone say that at a salon? So if you can get good at these kind of shapes, you know, the good news about this kind of haircut, this haircut needs to be cut a lot more often than hair down to the middle of your back, right? I still love long hair. I don't have anything against it, um, but it's nice to have a variety. Okay. Should be just about done here, just picking up this last little piece. All right, so now we're starting to look really good. You can see again, let's take a look at that profile here. You can really see how this is kind of rounding in. Come down here, like kind of see it from this side. Yeah, you can really see how this is starting to kind of come in this way and work its way down softly through the nape. Okay, not quite on the home stretch, but we're getting there. So what I like to do, this is just something that I've found works really well for me. Okay, so what I'm gonna first do is, what you do is something like this, okay? You put your comb on the top of the head and get an idea of where the head's rounding down through the back. Okay, and that's just about right where I am. So this hair here, 
is basically the hair that was sectioned out from that triangle. So I'm going to work that into the back now. I'm going to start from this side, because that's where I was before. So this looks like it was already cut. Now I can keep going. Section one. I'm actually going to work my way from the bottom up now. Now you might be asking, why would he go from the bottom up if he's going from the top down? Because I don't want to collapse this shape right here. I want to make sure that my weight line stays here. If I work my way from the top down, I could flatten that too much. This area should not be too flattened. This is really important for my feminine kind of profile and feminine shape. One more section here. Again, staying really clean, really consistent. Working my way from the bottom now up. So watch what I mean. Bottom of the section. Not sliding my fingers out as I cut. That's what uh, one of the misconceptions a lot of people think. If you slide your fingers out while you cut, you're going to lose your tension really quickly. Now, you might see an ever so slight movement, but I'm not doing this and like rapidly moving. So meaning, I'm doing this, I come in. There's my fingers, not really moving. Now it's slightly sliding away, but not much. And look at the shape that you get, right? So this is that shape that you get. You want to really remember, remember what we were talking about before. The head shape is really important relative to what you're building, right? That's what graduation is all about. So my shape is doing this. That's really what it's doing. If I collapse this area and it goes too short, what would happen to my shape? I completely lose the pretty roundness that I have built right here. How many times have you seen that when the client comes back in, they have a lot of bulk right here, it's, or maybe it like collapses right here and a lot of bulk right underneath it, it's because of what I'm describing to you now. Question? How do you handle cowlicks in this area? Um, I think that you have to kind of like go with it, to be honest. I know that that sounds kind of crazy, but it's like, um, number one is, you know, do what, one of the things about the calyx is what I was just talking about. If you go too short in that area, it's just going to jump on you right away, right? So that's usually what happens. That's how you get yourself into trouble, where if this had a calyx and it went too short, it doesn't have anywhere to go. If there's a calyx here and I let go, look what it does. It's going to go down in, because there's enough length there. So usually the calyx situation, we get ourselves into a trouble when we're too short in that area. So give yourself some wiggle room. Stay a little bit longer in that area, um, and that will really, really help you. I also just try not to like make it a huge issue in my mind. You know, the calic is what the calic is. So if I feel like I need to over direct slightly more in that one little area to keep a little bit more length without it making it look like it's lopsided or too much weight there, then I'll do that too at times. Taking a shuffle over from the bottom now. Okay, good touch point here, and a pinch right here, and a pinch right here. See how that feels? That feels really good. Nice and balanced there. Okay, here, bottom up, right? So there's my guy right there. You can see it pretty easily. Nice and consistent. Section down, combing out, bottom of the section, working my way up. Another section here, working my way back. Now I can really go nice and open with this because this is really where uh, the mannequin gets very heavy right here, very weighty. So I'm actually going to go back in and Take the tip of the blade and just kind of tip in, which just softens the shape. Okay, this should be my, actually, let me come back this way now. Okay, I'm going to pick this back up as well. Just go back in and soften that. So now that I have this length to play with, I can go in and tip some out and lighten it up. On the sides, when I'm going shorter, no really need to do that, right? Because it was short enough that I wouldn't have to do that. Now you can really see that the entire back profile is complete, 
right? So this gives you that really soft, pretty pixie, right? Now, let's double check the sides here. I'm just gonna balance my shape out here. I have a little, I went a little higher on the other side, so I wanna do the same thing on this side so that I'm consistent. So that's just kind of being aware of what you're doing, what you're creating. There's just a couple strands that I wanna kind of bring in before I move on to the bang area. Or even to the top. There we go. Okay, so this is just like what I was doing on the other side. Just kind of working it in and making sure that I keep it long enough so that I have room. Let me recomb now. To kind of manipulate what I want with the bang area. Because remember, this is really going to start the connection into the bang area. So you know that I have enough length there. Let's just work in the rest of this side. simple. Well, you can see how that just blends right in. I'm going to lift it back up so it's not too heavy. Because again, always around the hairline of a mannequin, it gets like the heaviest. Hairline and the crown. Okay, I think that's about it. Let's just see if there's anything left. Yeah, that's it. So that's all it was. It was like a half an inch of a section just to make sure that I'm the same on both sides. Okay, so now, now let's start to talk about the top. Okay, this top used to confuse me back in the day. Right, like what do you do with the top now? How do you make sure that you blend all this in? Especially if you're dealing with this much hair. Well, what I like to do is now map it out, just like I had done with the underneath part of the head. So I left the top for last, right? I, I sectioned away, I went down to occipital. Then what I did was, went to the back to complete the whole back, and now we basically have the entire top. I'm taking a section basically down the center for a moment. Right, so that always helped me just like visually see where the hair falls. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna section out a nice deep triangle here for the bang area. It doesn't need to be like the whole bang, but this is obviously part of the top. So if you kind of come up here, come take a look up this side. You can really see, let me tilt it down for you. That's what I'm doing. Combing it nice and clean. Then we're gonna clip it away. And again, when your client sees you doing this and you're really being methodical, it's a game changer. They don't have a problem paying a premium price. You know, it's like when you go to a restaurant, right? When you're impressed by the service and then you're impressed by the food, um, are you upset about the check when it comes? No, you're happy to pay and you give a great tip, you know? I think that we need to elevate, think about this. We're gonna have to take less clients, right? We're gonna be forced into that. Hair salons that are currently open are doing that, right? So if you're used to taking maybe eight, nine or 10 clients, maybe you're gonna take four, five, or six clients. So how can you upgrade that service or elevate that service to make sure it's premium? You know, for my whole thing was always like, I didn't want to be like a, um, a low level hair salon and I didn't want to be a mid level hair salon. I wanted to make sure that we were a premium level hair salon. And we had to think about how we could create that in the way that we talk to each other as a team, the way that we connect to our clients, the way that we color hair, the way that we cut hair, it's an entire package, right? The way that we follow up with our clients, the way we consult with them, the way we communicate to them, all of the above, it really, really matters. Okay guys, so now we're gonna start to work on the top. So now you can see that I clearly have separated my um, bang section out, and now I have this basically, almost like two pieces of one section, because it's, it's sectioned out from the center. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take a section, like so, straight over here from that little whatever's left over and I'm going to just pull it toward the back, right? And now again, this is where you have the opportunity to make it a little bit more modern. Our, the top of our haircut is going to be slightly longer, I would say, than your like probably your classic pixie, but it's still going to have that same vibe. So I'm just going to connect this now into the back. So the more that you can break down your haircuts, the easier it will be for you to understand what you're doing and where you are in the cut. 
I know for a fact that where I am right now is the final transition from the back to the top, right? When I let this hair go, it fall, well, it's sticking straight up, but it will typically fall back that way, right? It's not gonna necessarily fall forward unless you move it around. So it's still that transition. So again, if this goes too short now, I might run into an issue here. But look what I'm doing here. I'm creating this shape that's working its way up. It's very consistent all the way up. So that's why right now my elevation is really important. Look how high I'm doing my elevation. I come here, we pick that back up so you can see the guide. So if the guy falls away, now it's a visual guy. So there you go with the, um, the fluidity of the razor. I think that's the big difference with that and scissor cutting. So again, not better or worse, just different. Okay, let's cross over this way now. Come the opposite way. So I find this really works well for me, this approach when I'm doing these kind of shapes. It also is a great way that if you decided to, you could just connect the whole top into the back and then disconnect it from the sides if you choose. So see how I'm pushing it around? I'm still really visually looking to make sure that visually it satisfies me. Okay, next section. Just coming over the top, just like so. Just coming straight back. So over directing slightly back would help me if I wanted to maintain a little bit more length. I'm gonna tilt your head up now. So now that I have that hair laying over, I'm gonna lift it up this way, and I'm gonna cut it from here. Now, I wanna give you an idea of what this would look like if it was scissors. I think that'll help you guys, for those that are maybe transitioning from scissor cutting to razor cutting. What would we be doing if it was scissors? Or what we would be doing, I mean, is lifting it up this way, let's say, and then, let's say cutting from here, right? Like so. What I'm going to do with the razor is I'm going to tilt her head toward me this way. I'm going to tilt her head toward me. That's going to help me with my elevation. So let's take that clean section again. Having her head tilted ever so slightly toward me. And now, coming straight in. Looking to build a little bit of length now. So again, this is how I like to break down the top of the head. So now look, it's right here. So if I try to reach over, that's probably going to be a little bit uncomfortable. So what I can easily do is tilt her. And I do this with a client as well. I'll tell a client on the front end sometimes, you're going to feel me tilting your head. And I'll say it at this point in the haircut. You'll feel me tilting your head probably differently than you've had tilted in the past. That's just because of me maneuvering with a different tool. So look at how I get my body over. Now, if, if I push the um, mannequin back upright, and you, oh, can you just hold that there? So they get an idea. If the head comes all the way up, look at where my elevation is. It's all the way up here. Basically coming straight off the head. So just trying to give you the idea of what's happening. And again, I'm not cutting toward the front. I'm staying in the section that I'm on right now. Nice and open. I want to have a really nice, open, flat blade now. I'm going to come back in and do the same thing again. See, I'm allowing some of that length to build. See that? Same thing here. Staying really organized. Just knowing exactly where I am on the top of the head. And I can really manipulate that, kind of going a little deeper with my blade into the hair because of this area that is very dense of the mannequin. So I want, it, I want that soft fluidness. I don't want it to get too bulky. You know, there's a lot of times where you're razor cut and you're like, damn, I could have even gone more open with it on certain types of hair. So you want, don't be afraid. Uh, that doesn't mean just go in and start hacking by any means, but it does mean that when you build the skill set to, to understand how to manipulate the, bra the blade, then don't be afraid of it. See, like I'm doing so now, look how open that really is. I mean, that's gonna create a lot of soft texture. Okay, just about done with that side. I'm gonna move back to the other side. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. Same thing. Nothing much is changing. I'm just staying really consistent. So I'll leave that there. This is what I had cut before. I have my guide underneath, and I have my guide from what I just built. Come this way. Actually, let's lower her down ever so slightly. Here's my section. Okay, leaning toward me. There's the guy right there, you can see it. See it right there? All I need to do is blend it in. 
See, when you break your haircuts down like this, they make sense, you know? And like, that's what used to happen to me. I'd get confused and like, um, some, see, when you get confused, you get overwhelmed. When you get overwhelmed, you get a little bit panicky. And then you start to like, it goes off the rails really quickly from there. Then you're like, oh my goodness, this is too short. Oh my gosh, is this too short? Is she gonna freak out? And you just start playing, you know, you're you doing that self-talk that can really throw you off. So just trust your guide, stay consistent. See, there's my guide here, look. Right there, you can see it. Elevation really important here. Go back in and just give it a little bit more of a texture. That's that tipping motion. So when I tip the, uh, with the blade, we're working the tip of the blade into the surface of the hair. It's like tickling the surface in a way. Um, that doesn't change the length of it, but it does alter the density, I would say. And just the, the texture. Right, just like so. So see, my main section didn't change the length, but it just got a little bit more airy. Okay, so now let's pause for a second, see what we have left. Okay, I'm gonna stay on this side of the head. Okay, so now I'm just keep taking sections this way until I reach, and basically until I run out of hair that's not clipped. Okay, there's my guy, or excuse me, there's my section right here. I'm gonna pick it up. Right, you can really see it. I think it's a little bit of a thick section. Let's just take a little bit less hair. All right, so don't be afraid. If you take too much hair, that's okay. It doesn't mean, whatever you pick up, doesn't mean you have to cut it. You can let it go and say, all right, it's a little bit too much hair. It feels a little bit too much hair in my fingers like it did for me. So don't be afraid of that either. See, I'm really using my finger. And I'm pushing, but I'm not pushing with much pressure. I'm just allowing the blade to do the work. My finger is just stroking it through, right? I'm not like... Put, applying pressure and pushing it down. My finger is just pushing on this metal part of the blade so that the blade itself can connect with the hair. Okay, just come in here, making sure that I have nice softness there. Don't want a big corner right here. See that little corner right there? I don't want to knock it off, but I just do want to just file it a little bit. So now you can really see how the top is connecting into the side. You guys see that? See, and you have a little bit of varying lengths through here because of the way that I'm um, manipulating the blade and because of my elevation. So I think that looks really pretty. Same thing to the other side now. Well, actually, before I do that, I had one more section there, right? I did. And we'll just do the same thing. Okay. Here we go. And notice that I stopped spraying with Hydra Mist a few sections ago because I really want to now start to get an idea of what the hair is doing. Like when I just put my fingers through it, if it's too damp, um, you might not really get an accurate idea of how much texture you put, because the water can kind of blur that a little bit. So at this time, I feel like it's damp enough. So now I just want to see what I'm, what's coming to fruition in my shape. Um, Nick definitely helped me do that. Like he'd be like, stop spraying, stop spraying, stop spraying. Especially if we're on stage. If you're interested in doing any kind of platform work, you know, 30 minutes on stage feels like five minutes. It's so fast. Um, and one of my problems is I'd always like, my, my client would be too wet at the end of it, or my model. So I learned how to do that. That, that made me more efficient even when I came back to the salon. See, a nice open stroke here. Look how open now, pretty flat. This is a very advanced technique. We call this, basically, this is planing. But again, a very soft, look how soft and fluid the blade grazes across the hair. It's not like hard and choppy. A little bit more hair here, just pinching that off. Okay, you can really see again what that shape is starting to look like. Now let's come to this side. We're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. Then we have the bang and we'll wrap it up. Okay, working my way up. Now, the head needs to tilt toward me this way now. I still need that same elevation. Remember, I don't want to pull this all the way back here. I want to lift this up and have elevation. So again, if this was scissors, it'd be similar to this kind of a, of a feel. Similar, not quite exactly the same, but very similar. So 
See, and what happens as you go through the cut, especially with mannequin hair, your blade starts to dull, right? So you, you'll know that as you become an experienced razor cutter. So there are some moments in the cut that you might be able to like push the blade a little bit more than maybe in the first start of the cut when the blade was like literally brand new. Now let's get a feel. So again, this is the feel for balance. Okay, I'm putting my fingers through. You can see that I have a nice balanced shape and feel, but I also have a lot of texture and movement in the shape and feel. That's the beauty of the razor. Look how kind of airy that starts to create. So you can all of a sudden imagine how this client can even start to style their hair if they want to really go for it and be a little bit funky with it. You can also push this across and like wear it kind of side parted, very, very classic um, pixie as well. Just really depends on how the client feels that day. And I would show her that, like you could dress this hair really differently. Um, and that's a part of lifestyle and feel. You're going to a wedding and you want to really give it like that big feel through the front, a little bit more drama. You could, you could really do that with this kind of a shape. Okay, so now I'm taking this section. So I want you to have an idea. Look at where my guide is. Look at the tip of my fingers here. There's my guide. And look at back here. There's a guide from there as well. So I really have a blueprint now on exactly how much or how little to cut. So right here, and here we go. We're gonna go in, a little bit of the edge, right into the flat of the blade, and there it goes. Now let's just go back in. Just to pull out some of that weight. This should probably be the final section, I would imagine. So much hair is here. Let's split it into two. A little bit too much for one. Always recombing. You have to resist the urge that when you're toward the end of your haircut, that all of a sudden your sections start getting larger. Right? That's what happens to a lot of us as haircutters. You're running late, your next client just arrived, um, or even just for a student, it's just like you're almost done. So you're kind of excited to be almost done and see what you're creating. I'm just gonna kind of section it out here. Um, and you wanna just make sure that you maintain your discipline. That's really, really crucial to your, to your consistent success. You know, your client comes to you over and over and over again over the years because of your consistency. You ever been to your favorite restaurant and you always order that same entree? You know, and it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. That one time that it's not the same, you notice that time more than the 10 times that it was. Client the same way with, um, with the haircut. I am gonna spritz just a little bit now, but just a little bit, just because I want some slip for the blade. Just working this piece in now. All right, home stretch. Now this is definitely the home stretch because of our bang. So now I have the option here to do a short, short bang, to keep this bang longer and disconnect it. I mean, you could do whatever you want to do. I'm going to just keep going and be consistent with what I've been creating. But uh, again, this is where I allow like, you know, the consultation that I have with the client. Obviously, we probably already decided how short she wants the bang. Some people are really afraid of a really short bang. Some people love a short bang, just depends. Excuse me, it just depends. Okay, I will take a clip though, just in case I need to clip some of this away. I'm gonna push some of this hair away so I don't slip and slide. Okay, cool. Now, we have this nice big bang section. I'm gonna show you exactly how we're gonna break it down. We're gonna come across the bang section first this way, like so. And then we're gonna lift this up and clip it away. So again, very, very organized. Don't let it, don't, don't fall off the rails now, you know? And we do need to spritz this down because obviously this has been clipped up for a little while. So, you know, using enough moisture that I can control the hair, not too much where it distorts what I'm creating. So you're gonna probably wanna come over to this side just to see where I'm connecting. This is also why it's so important, that little area I was talking to you guys about that I sectioned out, if this was too short, think about how much trouble I'd be in here if I wanted this to be long. Right? If I want this to be long, I can connect from this shortest point and move my way long. If I want it to be short, I can take this and go shorter. Or I can make this shorter if I want it. But if it was already like cut to like right here, let's say it was a half an inch, you're gonna get a hole. That's just the, the reality. So here's this hair. I think this section, because the mannequin has so much hair around the hairline, let's just slim it down. Okay. 
Here we go. Very open blade. So see how soft and open that creates. Again, this is where I want a little bit of that classic pixie feel, so I don't want the bang to be too long in this particular shape. Again, totally up to you in this scenario, but I'm gonna just go for it. Okay, let's take that other little piece down now. Pretty much pre-sectioned for me. So again, I'm using kind of the side here as my guide, and now of course the underneath bang that I created already. Turn her a little bit toward me. Kind of just look how I'm peeling my kind of fingers away. So that nice strong tension. Look how strong the tension is in my fingers. They're actually overlapped ever so slightly in my fingers. Um, so they're not just side by side. One overlaps over the other. It just gives you really strong tension. It's really important when you're razor cutting that tension really is key. And now is a little bit of detail work as well. You know, start to really manipulate it, push it around, see what you got. This feels a little bit heavy to me, so I'm gonna come back over here and lighten it up. So I'm kind of detailing as I go now, because this is the home stretch. How's it looking, guys? Tell me. What do you think? Feel like you're learning something here? I hope so. I hope that you feel like today's bringing you some value on a, a Friday, normally, at Friday at, what time is it now? Probably close to noon or just after noon, I would say. Uh, the salon would be hopping and buzzing. It'd be kind of crazy right now uh, on a normal day. So the silence can be loud at times. So a big shout out to all of my fellow salon owners that are uh, still in states that um, are closed. I know that that's frustrating and hard and it's hard to watch other states and salons open up and then get back to what they do. Nick and I were talking about that the other day and you know, it's kind of, it just is what it is, so, you know, I'm with you there, and it is weird to be in a salon on, a busy, on what would be a busy Friday when it's this quiet. So my blade is definitely getting duller now. I can almost change it. I'm not going to, but I, I almost could. So you're just moving it around, just kind of getting an idea of what will this look like. Okay, so that was three sections. Section one, section two. Section three, we're gonna go with one more. Elizabeth says, you're a great teacher, learned a lot. Thanks from California. Thank you, Elizabeth. What part of California? I love California. I have like a love affair with California. What a beautiful state. What part are you in? Tia Roland says, love the tip for sectioning out the corners in the front hairline. Yeah, that's a, it's a, Tia, that's made a big difference for me. Um, in these kind of shapes. Man, it saved my life more than one time where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy I had more length there. Because <laughs> again, if you don't, it probably wouldn't have added quite as much here, but kind of would because this hair, you don't want this hair here to go as short as this. This is the hairline. This is kind of like that transition into the bang. So this allows you to have this dynamic shape. And think about this, if this was a human, you'd have a lot of action happening around the ear and around the hairline. That's a lot of time what is your signature on your whole entire haircut. You know, it's what, it's what stands out in the photo the most, um, and it's what you can see on the profile a lot. Elizabeth says she's from San Luis Obispo. Oh, oh we were there last San summer. Luis Obispo. We were there last summer. We actually did the whole entire coast. We, I have a family in Northern California. Um, she's in um, Petaluma. So we went from Petaluma all the way to LA, so that was fun. Okay, so now let's look at this side. We're doing the same thing, right, from that first section. I just took the whole clip out. Don't really need a clip now. Let's just make sure we're nice and clean. So again, before I start, I always double check that I'm clean. It's become a habit so much that I don't even think about it, I just do it. And that's the beauty about a habit. Once you build the right ones, they become, some, they become subconscious. But in the beginning, they have to be a very conscious thought. Very open stroke, very open blade. 
Now I'm moving much more toward the flat of the blade. Combing. You know, I found that like, uh, it's really funny. If you would have asked me when I first opened my salon if I was gonna teach hair cutting, it literally was not even like on my mind. I wasn't raised in that kind of a culture. I wasn't, you know, a trained hairdresser. You know, I was kind of like a um, suburban hairdresser. I went to a, a local Bosi's school, which is like a tech school. I didn't raise, I wasn't raised like Sasuni or anything like that. Um, so I think I'm a really great example of like, you can, as long as you're willing to push yourself and find the mentorship and find the guidance and, and seek it out and humble yourself enough. Like, you know, I, I did hair for 10 years um, and then I, then I felt like I put myself back through school. You know, it was just a different kind of school. It was like the Erojo school, you know, this was like when they only had, and I, not that I went to their um, cosmetology school, I mean that their academy, you know, it's like I, I viewed it as my new school that I was in. That's how I could get better. Raul says, I enjoyed this live demo tremendously. Thank you. Cheers from Boise, Idaho. Oh, awesome, Boise. Thanks so much. You see what I'm doing now? Now I'm really detailing, softening. I create my length first, then I go in and I texturize and I soften. We're not quite done yet. We're almost there. I'm just lifting this up. This feels a little heavy right here. Because I will go back through and I'm going to show you a little bit of what I would do for um, uh, like a scissor finish. Just a little bit, not much. Slightly off topic, but in our Slack, Monica just said that um, Cuomo announced that we're in phase two. So okay, it's better that's better news, yeah. All right, New Yorkers, we're in phase two. Awesome. So as soon as we get into phase one, we can really start thinking about what our date would look like. I think New York was extended to June 13th. But man, if we can get into uh, to business by mid-June, that'd be great. Okay, almost done now. Just have this little bit of hair left, so I'm just gonna keep going, staying consistent, right? I'm just kind of sectioning across the top of the head. Now I'm gonna tilt her. Because now this is becoming more like the final part of that top as well. So I'm gonna elevate so I don't get too heavy here. And I'm gonna lift up some of that hair that I cut from behind to make sure that I'm balanced. Meaning some of this hair that was already cut behind that section to this hair right here, you know, making sure that that has a connection. So I'm gonna pull it out this way. Really texturizing. All right, almost done here. Now I'm gonna tilt her even more. Again, I want that elevation. Let's clean this section up. I'm actually gonna come from back here now. Is that where my guide is? Let's get a nice flat blade. Really texturize. Same thing here. Go back in. How are we looking? Good. Okay, now, let's see what else we got. Let's see. Okay, so let's pull this down this way. I'm just, just gonna stay consistent. I'm gonna just come, I just switched my body position. I came back over to the other side because um, the hair is obviously here. So now I'm gonna tilt her this way toward me, but I'm doing the same thing. Lifting up, lifting up. This is just the detail and the texture. This is the fun part about razor cutting. Feels good to cut hair again, that's for sure. Even if it's not a human. Okay, here we go. Nice and, nice and flat blade. 
Again, just really texturizing. We completed the bang area. This feels like probably the last piece of hair to cut here. Alex says the last two miles of a marathon are always the hardest, but definitely the most rewarding. Very this true. This is true. So true about hair cutting. And that's why it's so important to keep your structure in that scenario. You know, like I was saying before, it's easy, you know, to start getting a little sloppy when you're almost done because you're like ready to be done, but that could make you could make or break your whole cut, you know? I'm actually gonna grab a scissor comb now. Just really quick. Uh, the reason why is I wanna have a comb that is just slightly smaller. For the top for a moment with my scissors. I'll stick with the white comb. Okay, so what I would be doing normally is this would be the mirror, right? And it would be like right in front. But I'm gonna use it to, I'm gonna face you guys so that you can see exactly what I'm, you know, it's like you'll be my mirror, right? So what I wanna do is just first kind of feel through it. You can see the balance and the shape and you can definitely see the texture, right? Um, I wanna show you a couple different things of styling, but before we do that, let's just go through the top really quickly. So I'm just gonna come across the top, every, like literally just straight across the top. Uh, I'm gonna flip my comb. And you can really see what that shape is. And I'm gonna come in with the point of my scissor and just kind of chip away a little bit if I need to. And then I can do some of this little detail work. This kind of mimics um, tipping. So see, it takes some of that hair out without disturbing that full line through the top. Get that out of my way. Now I'm just gonna come to the next section, straight across the top. Lifting up. Not too much to cut, this is all the detail. So what I'm really doing in essence is I'm closing on my way out. So it's really important to practice really great scissor work. Thumb only, thumb only. Right, so working my way in. Also, you can see what happens here. This is that shape that we created from before. So remember, you don't want to totally collapse this whole corner because that's what's happening is kind of rounding its way up. That keeps it really consistent and feminine. Same thing on this side, no difference. You can see the same thing working its way up. If you need to, you can just kind of chip away a little bit, but you don't want to totally knock that whole corner off. If you do, Really create a square, bless you. It's a bad allergy season this year, guys. For those allergy people, I feel you. I'm one of them. Been working my way through. Just clean that section up. Pushing that forward. Turn your head up a little bit. Okay, almost done. Great scissors made by DMAC. Love this scissor. It's like a workhorse scissor and it's a really great price point. You know, I think when you're young, a lot of people ask me this, what scissors do you want? It's like, you know, everybody feels like it's like the Jordans, you know, you, it, you know, maybe you can jump higher if you wear a pair of Jordans. You're not gonna cut better because you spend a thousand on your scissors. Uh, obviously not every scissor is created equal, but BMAC for this price point, I think it's literally the best bang for your buck in the whole industry because these go for like $300 and change. See, I'm just chipping in just like before. Okay, let's just lift up the whole front now. Actually, I'm gonna flip to lower tension with the wide side of the comb. See, so you could start to really see, even when you start to kind of take it from a different angle, if I stand to the side, you can really see what the consistency of shape is, length is, and texture. Okay, so let's have some fun with the style. So again, if you want to go really classic pixie with this, we should literally could push this around and you get that really, I'm actually gonna look behind the camera so I can see. 
so I can see what you guys are seeing. So you get that really cute kind of classic pixie. Um, a great product for this. So this is still one of my favorite pastes. This is called um, texture paste from Rojo. I absolutely love this product. So I use just a little bit of this, not too much. Pea size amount. Really work it through. Roja Cosmetology says, we love that Derek Anthony has alumni on staff, including Monica Cassiola. Yeah, Monica is one of our really busy hairdressers. She's also um, kind of gone out in more in the beauty world, so she does amazing makeup. Uh, we offer a service called microblading that really, we offer that service because of Monica, you know, so she's become a really, really big anchor for our entire salon. She's, she's just a great all-around human being and a wonderful employee. Okay, dry shampoo, signature dry shampoo. I'm gonna spray some of this in. Alex says, looks like Carmel's haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this actually does have that Carmel inspired kind of feel, you know? And again, you can really play with the styling. You can do really whatever you want. You can go as funky or as like a little bit more classic with this if you choose. I obviously haven't even blow dried it. I would encourage my client not to blow dry. She wouldn't have to. Um, and you just have a lot of options. Glint also, is a really great product to use for us from American Wave. We didn't have it on our cart right now. We must have run out of it because it's such a busy, busy, or a very highly used product. Um, but I want to thank you guys so, so much for spending this time with me today here in Nyack, New York. Again, I'm Derek Anthony. I own D. Anthony Hair Studio. You can check us out, danthony.com. Please stay tuned for the next lineup coming up every single week. My stylist, Amanda, will be on um, toward the end of next week, or I, I think, I forget which day. I think it's the 22nd, but stay tuned for what we post. You can also um, request me on Facebook, Derek Anthony. Follow me on Instagram, Derek, D-E-R-E-K, underscore Anthony, with another underscore after that, where you'll see a lot of the lineups for that, too. All right, guys, I hope that you have a rest of an amazing day, and have a happy Friday. Thanks for spending this time with me. Take care.